It's awesome to know that place in the Lord. Hallelujah. The psalmist David declared it in Psalms 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. Hallelujah. And my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you. Come on, somebody. Tell somebody, surely He shall deliver you from the sneer of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Come on. That's not for everybody. That's for those who dwell in the secret place of the most high God. That secret place is Christ. He's the one who said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall bear fruit and much fruit and fruit that remain. And he says, herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. And so you prove that you're my disciples. Come on, somebody. So you prove that what? You're my disciples. And God wants you to bear that evidence that you have been reared and trained, disciplined and groomed by him. Come on, somebody. The word of God tells us as parents that we are to train up our children. In the way they should go. That when they are of age, they will not depart from it. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. And because of that God who gives the instruction to parents to raise up their children in an orderly and righteous way. He wants to raise his children in an orderly and righteous way. Come on, somebody. He said in Ephesians 5, verse 1, Be imitators of God, followers of God as his dear children. When you follow God, you show that you are godly. You cannot be godly if you are contrary to how God behaves and how God performs. Hello, somebody. Because godly is saying you operate like him. An ungodly saying you operate unlike him. Come on somebody. And David said in the Psalms. That the righteous they are like trees. In Psalms 1 he says the righteous are like trees. Planted by the rivers of water. That bring forth what? Fruit in their season. Their leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. But what does he say next? From verse 4 to 6 he says, The ungodly are not so. They are not like trees planted by the rivers of water. <laughs> they are unstable. Ah, they are double-minded. They are wayward. He says, The ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff. Which the wind drives away. Every wind that blow the gun. Come on. They are not stable. Tree planted by the rivers of water is stable. It's planted somewhere. And you ask them which church do you go? They're not going on about church now they heart. <laughs> ah, they are unstable. They are like the chaff that the wind drives away. He says, therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. There's a judgment day coming. Hello, somebody. There's a what? A judgment day coming. And it's everyone will have to give account for how they lived in this body. God give you a limited time to work here in this body. But when this body dies, that's not the end of you. Because the word of God said 
that after death there is a judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die. He says once to die. But he says after death there's a judgment. Huh? Huh? But after this, the judgment. And if when your body die, you cease to exist. Then there's nothing to judge. But God says after death. Did he say after death? <laughs> after death there is a judgment. Come on. And he says, so Christ was offered to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time. How? Apart from sin. For salvation. In other words, he's not appearing again to cleanse away our sin. He's not appearing again to die for the sins of men. That was done already. And whosoever will can come to him now. And receive forgiveness of sin. Be cleansed from their sin. And give a new life within. To walk in newness of life in the Lord. Hallelujah. And that life is called eternal life. Come on. That life he said he gave us when we received the son. Hallelujah. God testified of that in 1 John 5 verse 10 and 11. Praise God. God testified about that. He testified in verse 9. Said if we receive the witness of men. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God. Which he has what? What has God done? God has testified of his son. So if you say it's only one person is God. Then who is he testifying of? Himself. God make a testimony about his son. That's why we know say it can be Allah. Because Muslims will tell you. Allah have no son. So this one is clear. He says, God has testified of his son. God give a testimony. He says, he who believes in the son of God. He what? Believes in the son of God. Has the witness. That's it. The witness in himself. The spirit is there. To be a witness to that person. That they are coming and being brought and trained into the family of God. That's where it all begins. But that's not where it ends. Come on somebody. So he said he has the witness in himself. And he who does not believe God. What has he done? He has made God. In other words he considers the testimony of God a lie. So he has made God a liar in his eyes. He sees God as a liar because what? He has not believed the testimony that God has given of his son. Notice he keep on saying of his son. Come on. And many don't believe. Jesus only don't believe said God of son. Now they say, see him, God manifests like son. In other words, say, he's like a son, but he's not really son. He's him, see him one. Uh -huh. You got to believe what the word of God says. He says, believe the testimony that God has given of his son. He says, and what is the testimony? He says, this is the testimony that God has what? Given us eternal life. And where is this life? He says this life is in his son. It's his son that makes us sons. Hallelujah. And he says there, anyone who have the son have life. Verse 12. But anyone who does not have the son does not have life. He who has the son, what? 
has life he's not talking about mortal life there's a lot of people of mortal life that does not have eternal life because they don't believe the testimony that God has given of his son that he has given us eternal life and that life is in his son and he says they don't have the witness in themselves the one who believes as the witness in himself he has the evidence that that life is in him come on he who has the son he says has life and he's not talking about general life he's not talking about mortal life he's talking about eternal life mortal life is temporary it is it will fade away but eternal life does not fade away so he says he who has the son has life he who does not have the son of god does not have life and he says these things i have written to you why john said he written it he has written it he says to you who believe in the name who believe in what the name of the son of god hello somebody the name was given by the father but it, the, the name was worn by the son it's not the father named jesus <laughs> The father gave the name to his son. So he have right, all right to say his, his name. Because he's the one who gave it to him. He never named himself. He did not name himself. He was given that name. Doesn't scripture say so? Of course in Philippians too. Come on. Verse what? 10 to 12. Verse 9 to 12. He says, therefore God also has what? That's Philippians 2. Verse 9 to 12. Therefore God also has highly exalted him. Who is him? Is God highly exalted himself? No, he's exalting his son. And he says, he has only highly exalted him and given him the name. Who oh, give him the name? Right. So he says, God gave him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of those in heaven, of those on earth. And of those we are under the earth that everything tongue should what? Confess that who? Jesus Christ is Lord to whose glory? That's where you know who is the God who exalt him. That's where you know who is the God that give him the name. He said it is to the glory of God the Father. He can't be the father if he ain't got no children. Come on. You got to understand the principle. Hallelujah. That is laid out even in creation for us to know that it is so. Ah, glory to God. He says even the, we can understand the Godhead. He says even by the things that are made. It's in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. He says then that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All things that are ungodly, unlike God. That's what he called ungodliness and unrighteousness, things that are not right. When you say God don't have no son, that's not right. When you say God is in the same father and son and Holy Spirit, that's not right. Because God did not say that. 
So he says, who suppress what they do? They suppress the truth in unrighteousness. How that? Because what may be known of God. What is that? What may be what? Known of God is manifested in them. For what? For God has shown it to them. How did God show it to them? Verse 20. For since the creation of the world, he's invisible. You see, God is invisible. But he said, the invisible attributes are clearly seen. How are they seen? Being understood by the things that are made. Come on. The man is not son and father and Holy Spirit. Eh -eh. And he's made in the image of God. It is understood by the things that are made that are clearly seen. Lord Jesus. Come on somebody. Huh? Huh? So he says, understand this. It's being understood by what? The invisible attributes of God are clearly seen being understood by what? The things that are made, even his eternal power and what? There it is, God head. So that they are what? Without excuse. Next verse. Hallelujah. So he says, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God. Nor were thankful. But what happened? They became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened professing to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible god into an image make like corruptible man and birds and four foot animals and creeping things huh come on everything that god made he made through his word and through his Holy Spirit. His word is God. And, his whole, and the Holy Spirit is God. So how did he do it? He did it through his word. And through his Holy Spirit. He spoke. He released the word. The word empowered through the Holy Spirit carried out the work. He released the word. The word empowered to his Holy Spirit carried out the work. Let me show you from beginning. It is so. Let's look at when God spoke to Mary. The Virgin Mary. Hallelujah. It's in Matthew 1. When the Lord spoke to Mary, what was given to her? It was the word of God that was given to her. It was the what? So when even God's son. When God's firstborn coming into the world. He comes into the world. Through the word. And the Holy Spirit. Watch this. He said in verse 18. The birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, what? Before they came together. Means that before they had any point of intimacy, any form of intercourse, she was found with child of who? Child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, Wanting to make her a public example. Not wanting to make her a public example. Was minded to put away 
secretly. He didn't want to cause her public disgrace. Because he knows she's fully convinced of what she says. But he's not convinced it is so. So he's doing it privately. You, you believe that and you see that. But I don't know. And I'm not up for that job. So he's putting it away or away secretly. But what happened? But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord. An angel of who? Of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. Come on. Hello, somebody. Here. Here. She's betrothed to him. She's not yes his wife. You get that one? When he says to take Mary, your wife, and say wife, and don't say your fiancé. Fiancé was not a word in the English word, English language yet for them to say fiancé. So they will be called wife. Because that's what he's taking her as. He don't take her as wife yet. Is the engagement he's going to break off. You get it? It's the engagement. So he, but he's just telling her, telling him, you, you don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife. Because he says, you're going to take her as your wife. But he's not wife yet because if his wife, then it will be a divorce will be taken out. But it wasn't a divorce. It was just to break the engagement. Got it? So he says, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is what? Is of the Holy Spirit. No. If he says, what conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Who caused Mary to conceive with the child? The Holy Spirit. How did that Mary gain that conception? She first had to receive the word that was told her, to her that she would be a virgin with child. And she was saying, how can this be since I've never been with a man. But then a testimony was given to her. About Elizabeth. Her cousin. Who was barren from youth and all in age. But now was with child. And she was now being told. Is anything too hard. For God. Huh? And being that she's told that. She said beat unto me. Remember that statement she said. Beat unto me what? As you have said, in other words, she received the word. What did she do? She received the word. But it's when the Holy Spirit came upon her, the word conceived. She conceived when the Holy Spirit came upon her. Because she's, she hold on to the word of God. Children of God are birth from God through the word and his Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Children of God are what? Birth through the word of God and through his Holy Spirit. Come on now. So you see the word was given to her. She held on to the word and the Holy Spirit came upon her. And she conceived and bare a son. And the word declares he is the son of God. This is conceived of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. Huh? But it's also conceived of the word. Because the word was given to her first. Then she received of the spirit to conceive. You got that? Likewise, no one becomes a child of God. Without the word of God. 
are without the Holy Spirit. Both has to work together to bring them into the family of God. That is God's birthing channel to reproduce children in his family. Oh God. Come on somebody. Hello. So the word is referred to like a seed. Hallelujah. And what fosters and nurtures and full brings that seed to full growth. Hallelujah. It's as the ovary that that seed connects with to produce conception. Hello. And so he says the Holy Spirit is the one that catches that word in your spirit. And works that word in you. Into maturity. Hallelujah. To bring forth the very nature and virtue of God within you. As a child of God. You can't do that of yourself. This is something supernaturally done. By the word of God and the Holy Spirit. That's why the Lord said it. Those who are born of God. He says they are not born of flesh. They are not born of blood. They are not born of the will of man. He says they are born of God. In Rome, as John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse 1, verse 11 to 13, yes. John 1, verse 11 to 13, he says, He came, who is that he? That's Christ, that's the word that became flesh. He says, He came to his own, and his own did not receive them. But as many as received them, what did he do for those who received him? He gave them the right to become children of God. Not everybody is children of God because God made them. God made the angel that has become Satan. The common angel of God is because he has turned away from the truth of God. He has become, as they call him, the father of lies. A deceiver, that old dragon, that old serpent, the devil. But he was made by God. But that don't mean that he is God's child. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Being God's creature, a one that is made by him, doesn't automatically mean you are his child. God has to declare a word to you. To move you from being a creature to become his offspring. Let me give you an example of that. Even when the word of God. That was God. That was with God. God spoke to the word. God what? God spoke to the word. And said to the word. Today I have begotten you. God said that to the word. Watch this. In Hebrews 1, verse 5 to 6. This is talking about what God said and who God said it to. Surely God was not speaking to himself. <laughs> he wasn't speaking to himself. He says, for to which of the angels, angels are only, but he said, he did not say this to angels. Those are the spirit beings around him up there. And he was not saying this to angel. So he says, for to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son? He says, dear, God has never said to an angel, you are my son. So who was he speaking to when he said, you, you know, say me. I am my son. Uh -uh. He said, you are, there's another person there. When he said you. So he says, you are my son. And what did he say? Today, I have begotten you. And again he said, I will be a father to him. Who is the him? Is not himself. 
I will be a father. I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me a son. That was when the Lord spoke word. Announcing that his word now becomes his son. Lord of mercy. Can God command his word? Oh yes he can. Glory to God. Come on. He says, I will be to him a son. I will be to him a father. And he shall be to me. Correct? He to me a son. But when he again what? Brings the firstborn. Did he say firstborn? That's the same one now he called son. The same one he says is the heir of all things. So he says, he brings the firstborn into the world. He says, let all the angels of God worship him. You will not read anywhere that God said to the angels, worship me. Check your scripture if you see that. So he's speaking of another. God never have to say to angels, worship me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when he command, when he declare his firstborn coming into the world, born and wearing human flesh, in human body, God had to command. You get it now? You get it now? Because he's not seen God in his form. He's seen God now in human form. Are you getting this? The form is talking about the body. God has a body that does not look like men. <laughs> look at Philippians. Philippians 2 verse 5. Verse 5 to 8. Yes. Philippians 2 verse 5 to 8. Look at this testimony about Christ. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 6 now. Who being in the form of God, being in whose form? In the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God. But made himself of what? No reputation. Taking the form. See, it's not the same form. In the form of God, he says equality with God is not robbing God or any way demeaning are belittling, are devaluing God's worth and power. But he says, in this form, as a man, watch that. He says, he had to make himself of what? No reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in whose likeness? Is that the likeness of God? No, that's the likeness of man. And because he's in the likeness of man, God had to command angels when he come. Born in a manger. Wise men coming. Shepherds were out there grazing and saw the light over Jerusalem. And angels were singing and worshiping God. God had to command, worship him. Come on, somebody. Because he's not in his form. He has taken on our form. Says in verse 8, he says, being found. What he said in verse 8? And being found in the appearance as a man. That's speaking about the form, the body. Being found in the appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became what? Obedient. To the point of death. Even the death. 
of the cross. Come on. Look also in Hebrews 10. Hallelujah. Hebrews, not Hebrews 10. Hebrews 2. Yes, Hebrews 2 verse 10 to 14. Hebrews 2 verse 10 to 14. He says, for it is fitting for him. For him who? That's Christ. That's the word. It's fitting for him. For whom are what? He says, for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing what? Many sons to glory. Come on. We talk about all of sin and fell short of the glory. What glory did we fell short of? The glory of God. It was not the glory of man we fell short of. This form is not the form God originally intended for us to have. Oh God. This form is one that has come as a produce of the invasion of sin in the human race and in all creation. And Christ is the one that is bringing us back to the original form. Lord Jesus. Christ is the one what? Bringing us back to the original form. Christ is the one that bears the image of God. Come on, talk to me now. Look at this, what he says. For both he who sanctifies and those who are what? Being sanctified are all of one. For which reason what? He's not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. Saying I'll declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will sing praise to you. Who is the you he's singing praise to? To himself? No to the father. Come on give me more. Verse 13 and 14. He says and again I will put my trust in him and again here i am what he says here i am and the children whom who god has given me huh he alone is god then which god give it to him come on he says here i am and the children whom god has given me and he says in as much then as the children of what partaking of flesh and blood he himself likewise what shared in the same that same flesh and blood body he says that's how he tasted of death come on somebody his spirit did not die on the cross it was the flesh that died. Come on. He says, in as much then as the children are partaking of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that what? Through death. That's how he tasted of death. Through that body he wore. Through the form he took on. That was like ours. In his own form. No one can't nail him on tree and destroy nobody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. But in this form, they can. So it says, in as much then as the children as partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might what? Destroy who? The devil. The one who had the power of death. That is the devil. And release who? Release those who through fear of death were what? All their lifetime subject to bondage. That's the human race. Come on. And he says we are delivered through him. Hello somebody. But when he rose again. Hallelujah. And ascended into heaven. 
He ain't coming back with no fleshly body. <laughs> he ain't coming back with no fleshly body because he already declared, Paul declared already in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50 that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Because he says this body is temporary. It's compared to a tent. Tent is not made for permanent dwelling. Tent is for temporary dwelling. Until you get a building for a more permanent residence. That's all. So just the same way Paul spoke about that in 1 Corinthians. Well, 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 to 5. Paul speaks about this body versus the body that God has for us to inherit the kingdom. There's a body he has for you that will more yet let you look like him. This body don't look like him. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That's going to be a wake-up call for many. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5, verse 1 to 5, he says, For we know, what, what did Paul say? We know that if our earthly house, what earthly house is he talking about? Our body is not talking about the house that you're living and catching drive. He's talking about your body. So he says, he says, the earthly house, and what he called that earthly house. This tent, he says, it's temporary, like a tent. It's for temporary living. But the building is for permanent address. Come on now. He says, this tent is destroyed. What he say we have? We have a building from God. Whoa, glory to God. A house not made with hands. In other words, human beings didn't come together to reproduce after this kind. That's what Jesus said. That which is born of flesh. His flesh. But that which is born of the spirit. His spirit. Come on now. And he says, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands. Where is it? It's eternal in the heavens. It is not the heavens. But he says that body is eternal in the heavens. You're hearing it? He says, for in this we groan. What do we groan for? Earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. He's talking about that body God has for you. That is indestructible. That will not grow old and age. Cold and die and pass away. Uh-uh. One that is eternal. Come on now. In heavens. Isn't that what he says? To be clothed with our habitation. And where he says that habitation is. It is from heaven. Notice he didn't say heaven is your habitation. He says your habitation is coming from heaven. This suit you got down here that is flesh and blood came from the earth. That's why I call it earthly house. But he said there's a body that he has prepared for you in heaven. That is eternal. Come on now, somebody. And he says, we are waiting, earnestly desiring, groaning within ourselves to be clothed with our habitation, to be clothed with such a body. Woo! And he says, if indeed, having been what? Been clothed, we shall not be found what? Naked. It means not everyone is going to get that body. That body is reserved for the just. That body is reserved for the godly. 
That man is reserved for God's children that have partaken of flesh and blood here, but will put on that glorious body for the kingdom of God here. You get that? So he says, yes, we are, we who are in this tent, he says, grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed. He says, not because we want to die, because when you step out of this body, the body die. So he said, it's not because we want to be unclothed, be without a body, but further clothed. That what? Mortality, that's temporary life, will be swallowed up by life. That life, there is eternal life. Come on. If God give you eternal life and he don't give you an eternal body, then that body going we out, leave you still having life, but the body gone. <laughs> Come on, somebody. So he has a body for you. But verse 5 says, and verse 5 says, Now he, now who? He who has prepared us for this very thing is who? Is God. Who also has what? He has given us the spirit <laughs> as a guarantee. That's what the the John was talking about in 1st John 5 when he says he who believes on his son as a witness in himself is the seal unto the point of the when your body is redeemed the body is changed from mortal to immortality huh is not the spirit changing to mortal to mortality when Paul talk about change from mortal to mortality and raised the dead raised is not the spirit being raised is their bodies being raised to be changed from mortal to mortality come on and he says those who are alive and remain they won't die to change their bodies will change while they're still standing that's why he says not all will sleep behold i show you a mystery Huh? We shall not all sleep. He said, we are all not going to die. He says, some will be here when the Lord comes. And they will, but they will not be changed before those who have already experienced death. Their body must raise up and be meet them in the air with a transformed, glorified body. And he says, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet them in the air huh what an awesome god come on christ is the image of the invisible god colossians 1 verse what 15 colossians 1 verse 15 he says he is the image who is the image christ the firstborn same one he said is the firstborn if he said firstborn, there must be others that are born. <laughs> Come on. He says, he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. For by him what? All things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether thrones are dominion, or principalities are powers, all things were what? Created through him. Somebody worked through him for him to say through him. Because I'm bringing you the word. But God is bringing you the word through me. <laughs> Somebody working through me to bring it to you. And if he says through me, then it's not me alone. He says, all things were created through him and for him. And he is what? He is before all things. And in him, all things consist. 
Give me the next verse. And what does it say? He is the head of the body. What body is that? The church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things what? He may have the preeminence. Does he have preeminence over the Father? No, he says, for it pleased the Father. Is the Father set it up that way? It pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him, if you say by him, somebody's working to use him. He says by him to reconcile all things whoo, to himself. God used his son to reconcile all things to himself. And God called his word his son of God Almighty. And he says, all things were reconciled through him. Hallelujah. 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 Whether things on earth are things in heaven. Having made peace with peace through what? The blood of his cross. Come on. Look in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 24. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 24. He says then comes the end. Then comes what? The end when he delivers the kingdom to who? Who is Jesus delivering the kingdom to? To himself? No. To God the Father. When he puts an end to all rule. And all authority. And power. For he must reign. Till he has put all enemies. Under his feet. Come on, give me more. But who is putting all enemies under his feet? Is he put all enemies under his feet? No, the father tell him, says, sit here until I make your enemies. Your footstool is the father put him there. He says, the last enemy, huh? That will be destroyed is who? Is death. Look at verse 27 now. 27 has the icing on it. He said 27 and 28. For he has put all things under his feet. So who put all things under his feet? God the Father. Come on. He has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. In other words, the one who put all things under him is not subjected to him. Yeah. He says, knowing all things are made subject to him, then the son himself yeah, will also be subject to him who put all things under him that God which God is talking about there God the Father come on now may be all in all Glory to God. It takes discipline. I say what? It takes discipline to receive the word of God. The rebellious will always wrestle with the word of God to their own damnation. Because they are rebels. Smile in your face and talk behind your back. 
They are rebels. Gossipers and slanderers. Rebels. Peter said, those who wrestle with scripture, wrestle to their own damnation. It will not be considered as just your opinion. We did not preach to your opinion. We preach to you the word of God. Come on. It's in 2 second, second Peter 3, verse 14 to 16. Peter said, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Come on. Without spot and Remember I shared with you the testimony how I saw some renowned preachers having a conference in a dream and I was there at the conference and I hear them speaking some things out of their mouth to the congregation and the congregation saying yay things that were heretic blasphemy Come on. And I was in shock. I could barely wait for the meeting to be over to speak with them privately. And when the meeting was over, I went up to speak to them to see if it was a slip of the tongue. Because you can have a slip of the tongue. But to be forceful and final and conclusive and some statements that's not a slip of the tongue come on now so i i went just to ensure did you hear what you said huh and i said it to them you can't be saying that and the boat of them were there backing up each other say yeah like I'm the fool. I am the unlearned one. And my heart broke. I felt a sense of pain for them. Because I know they were in error. And I was in shock. And I was whispering within myself. Lord, how did they get there? And same time, while well, they're debating to argue their point, the Lord appeared to my right hand, right by me. And he answered me to the question I was asking, how did they get there in their teaching? And he said, because they're still meddling in sin. And I preached this word about no more sin. And they said, no. That's too much to ask. Because God knows the world we're living in and the vile nature of this flesh we have. But that is going to cost them more than what they expect. Come on, somebody. Because when you meddle with sin... There are times you can't tell when it's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And when it's the devil. Because you're heeding both their voices. You're not, you're not acting only to one voice. Other spirits are talking to you. And that's how they got poisoned and corrupt. And they were now corrupting the people. Hello. This was what the Lord showed me. Here in 2 Peter 3 verse 14. He says, Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent. Be what? Diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. 
And consider that what? The long suffering, the patience of the Lord is salvation. The time he's given us is for us to get it together. No, sir. But not to skylark and say, God is merciful. Uh uh. He said, As our beloved brother, Paul, according to what? According to the wisdom given to him as written to you. What has he said? He says also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people, you hear it? Untaught and unstable people, twist to their own destruction as they what as they do the rest of the scriptures so if he said the rest of the scriptures peter was declaring that even what paul was writing in the letters were scriptures some people to this day don't believe those are scriptures. They say scriptures is really the Torah and the Old Testament. But you got to understand the word of God spoken and put in writing is scriptures. Come on. And it is God breathed. It is inspired by God. And it is given to you. That you come in the fullness of the knowledge, in the unity of the faith, the full stature and measure of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for what? It is profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Come on somebody. We love the Lord. Then we must hear his word. And when we hear his word, we must obey his word. We obey the word, he said, we must keep obeying it. Because the obedient can become disobedient. Hello. But if you continue to be obedient, that will not stay in your record. It will show that you are continuing in the life of God in Christ. And that indeed, the spirit of God dwells in you. Huh? And anyone who abides in Christ and Christ abides in them do not sin. And he wants you to know he's training you through the word to know how to live as his true children. And as long as you keep rejecting the word he says you are rejecting it to your own damnation. You will not escape the judgment. The word of God is true. And there is no lie in truth. Come on somebody. Stand with me. We are going to pray. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has called us. To know the truth. Those who don't know the truth can't have true fellowship with God true fellowship is based on truth come on where there is no truth there is no true fellowship don't you know you can't have true friendship without truth you can't have true worship without truth you can't have true fellowship without truth you can't have true life without truth. 
Come on, somebody. If we embrace truth, ch truth will change us into the beings that are pleasing before God and welcomed into his kingdom. Come on, give God the praise in here. Hallelujah. Lift those hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Change me, oh God. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Wash me through and through. Ooh. Create in me a clean heart so that I may work. Worship you. Well, come on, somebody. Change me, oh God. Come on, cry out to God today. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Hey. Watch me through. And through, hey God, create in me a clean heart so that I may worship you. Anybody want him to change you? Lift those hands to the Lord and say, Change me, oh God. Come on, somebody. Make me more like you. Change me, oh God. Hey. Wash me through. Wash me through, wash me through, and through. Create in me a clean heart so that I Worship you. I want you to change me. Come on. Oh, change me. Come on, somebody say, change me. Oh, no. Change me. Come on. Say, change me, oh, oh Lord, change me, oh change, change me, oh, you know what to do, change me, hey, hey, hey. change me, I need you to change me. I know you can't change me. Only you can change me. Change, change me. Whoa. Oh, Lord Jesus, change me. Hey, hey. Change, change, change. Oh. Change 
has come over me. I want the full change has come over me. I want the full change has come over me. Come over, hey, change. Come on, somebody cry to God and say, Hey, change me. I know you can change. Hey, hey, Jesus, change. Oh, oh yeah, change. Lord God, I know you can. You got a power in your hand. Change. Hey. Hey. Ooh. You can change every broken piece in my life. You can put it together and make it right. Yes, Lord. Coming into you right now. Take it, Lord. I give it all. One devil change has come over. Me one wonderful change has come over me. One hey, the full change. Hey, the wonderful change. One the full change has come over me. Come on, receive that change. He said he will take out that heart of stone. Give you a heart of flesh. Give you a new heart. And pour his spirit in you. That will cause you to do the things that pleases him. Oh yeah. Change. I can't do it by myself. And I got nobody else but the chain. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, worship him right there. Let him hear your heart. Oh, change me. Hallelujah. I know you can, you know you can. I know you can. Yeah. Hallelujah. Father, we give it all in your hands. You said it is not of the will of man. Not of flesh and blood. It's not of my God, our own will. That this is done. We have tried it our way and our way has failed. But you never fail. The word cannot return to your void. It must accomplish what you send it to do. And you command it and it stood firm. You spoke and it came to pass. And we embrace your word right now. For your word endures forever. Those who in, abide in your word will endure forever. So we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, to birth that life within us that reveals that we are truly children of the Most High God. In you, there is no darkness, no darkness at all. 
light and perfect light he said if we say we have fellowship with you and walk in darkness we lie and do not practice the truth because you are light and in you there's no darkness at all if we abide in you we'll experience the same light and life everlasting through our Lord Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in us we give it a praise Father come on give him the praise come on give him the glory come on magnify him. come on lift up holy hands and adore him. he's worthy yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. oh yes hallelujah oh hallelujah thank you lord yeah. Thank you, Lord. We believe that it's done. And we trust you. Through your word and your Holy Spirit. To be a witness. With our spirit. That we are indeed. Children of God. And if children. Ears of God and joint ears with Christ. If we suffer with him, we will also be glorified together. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you for bringing this word to our attention. That we will know the importance of becoming children of God to you. And then by becoming children to grow as disciplined, fully trained children that bear the heart and nature of their father. For you said, any branch in me that does not bear fruit, my father takes away. And we don't want to be cut off. We want to be fruitful as a fruitful vine in the house of the Lord. We embrace your anointing and your presence and your power to do so. We look to you in faith and trust you to do the work in us. And embrace and cooperate with the work that you're doing in us. Through your word and through your Holy Spirit. We give you the glory as we claim the victory. In Jesus' name. Come on, give him the praise right now. Come on, give him the praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's time to release you now. We come to the end of our service for today. We still got to meet back here for crusade tonight. Hallelujah. But I want to make sure that I still got feet to stand on. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And a voice to still declare the word. Praise God. So we encourage you with the word today. Hope that you take the word and run with it. And know that God that began a good work, he knows is faithful to reform it. So keep relying on him, depending on him, thinking on him, being mindful of him. He said he'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Praise God. And while I'm declaring his word to you, I want to understand we have a book release. It's on Amazon.com. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom. So it's undertitled uh, The Gospel that Jesus Preached. And we want persons to know, yes, we can take any verse from the scripture and it's all inspired and teach someone about David and Goliath and about Daniel and Lion Ben and all these things. There, there are scriptures. But Jesus came preaching the gospel of the kingdom and he says there are hidden truths that are called mysteries of the kingdom. That he says you as the disciples need to know. And those things we can excavate from the scriptures that are written. And also from what God is downloading to expand our understanding and our knowledge in these things. That we become more and more fruitful in him. Because he says even those who bear fruit 
he prunes that they bear more fruit. Come on now. So I want to encourage you to grow in the Lord. Amen. So you can order that book. Go on Amazon. That come type in the search box. Richard V. Figure and the book will come up. You can order it anywhere around the world. And of course, it will be a great booster to your faith and your walk in the Lord. It's all centered around the theme of the gospel that Jesus preached, which is the gospel of the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. So I wanted to know more about it. You can check and verify that with, with, with um, Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 and Matthew 9 verse 35. You will see that everywhere Jesus went, that was the gospel he was preaching. The gospel of the kingdom. And so I wanted to know more about it because there are over 39 parables Jesus gave. And all of them were about what the kingdom of God is like and how the kingdom of God operates. And what is the response character needed for those who enter the kingdom and will inherit it and be of course revealed as embracing the glory of God there amen so we wanted to know the whole truth and believe me there's much to tell and so little time to tell it so we put it in writing that you can have it even if you're not hearing us or unable to get abreast with what we're teaching here you can take the time to get the book and ask the Holy Spirit to expound, to open it, your wisdom and understanding to you. That you will truly understand the depths of the mysteries that is there. And apply it in your life and see the evidence, the fruit and benefits that our God wants to see manifest in you. Bearing forth in your life. Amen. Praise God. So we encourage you to be strong in the Lord. In the power of his might. You want to get more of the teachings. Send a friend's request to Richard Fagan on Facebook. Be plugged into our five live stream teachings, and we still have crusade going on. This is our third night of crusade. Hallelujah. It's going to be resurrection power tonight. Hallelujah. And we want you to get a fire. Hallelujah. That fire in your spirit to start a blaze again for the Lord. Hallelujah. That many of you have lost your first love and the joy of the Lord that you once had is dwindled down. But we want to set you on fire with the word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. King that flame. Hallelujah. That caused you to be hallelujah in the bosom of the Lord again and experiencing the fellowship, the communion of his fellowship and his spirit working in and through you. Amen. So we encourage you to get on board. Join us tonight whether online or in the house at 3 East Street, Montego Jamaica as we declare in, in this Gospel Kingdom initiative and we declare in the Gospel of the Kingdom. Amen. Praise God. So it's 15 nights of preaching and tonight is the third night. So we encourage you to come on out. If you want to get more of the teachings, we say you can connect with us on Facebook and the other social pages there. Also in YouTube, you'll see the other nights that you have missed were uh, uploaded on our YouTube channel. So you can look for us there, look for it on Facebook and see the other teachings that you missed and build up your faith in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Also, we have a love gift for those who've been following the ministry. It's called our daily devotional. It's day-to-day -day teachings in the house that is not live streamed, but put in script form day-to-day -day and dated for each month uh, that is put in monthly editions that you can order it and we send it to, it, it to you in an ebook form that you can read it on your phone or device and believe me it will be a real eye-opener for many who desire and is passionate to get more of the word of the kingdom God wants us to display this and release it more to those who have an ear it says let them hear amen some don't want to hear that's fine but we want those who want to hear, we will give them the opportunity to hear what God wants to say to them. Amen. Praise God. So we believe God is lifting up to higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord and his fellowship and communion with his Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So if you want to know more about us, check out our website. It's increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl. Dot org. Of course, those who desire to sow to the ministry can sow to the site. You can look at some of the projects that we're dealing with there also. Long-term or short-term goals. If you want to connect with us to get some of them on the ground, we believe together we can accomplish more than we can apart. So the Lord nudging your spirit to do so, you, of course, should obey what the Lord tells you to do. We don't believe God 
bound us with everybody. We believe that God has appointed who he has appointed to stand with us. And who he has appointed to stand with others, they will do that too. Praise God. But we know that we are here doing the work of the Lord. And God testifies of us through signs and with wonders and the testimonies. That is going out of this place is uncommon and unusual. And it's really giving glory to God. Amen. Praise God. So we wanted to keep on pushing forward in faith and watch what God will do as you walk by faith and not by sight. Want to reach out to us. The number is on the screen. 876-839-9390. 876-557-2427. Looking forward to hear from you and to be your most holy faith in the Lord. Until next time, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. You blessed today. Hard time to release you, man. Time to release you a long time. Hard. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord live up his countenance upon you. And give you his peace. God bless you real good. Have a great day in the Lord. Bless you and see you all later. Praise God. <laughs>